My thoughts and feelings go out to everybody in Spain, specifically Valencia, who's been affected by this devastating flood. Absolutely horrible. I covered a little bit of it in the previous podcast and previous streams, and it just gets worse and worse. I watched a previous episode of mine because I was making clips, and I saw a timestamp. No, I saw a screen that I was looking at. I think it was a couple of days ago where it said the deaths were like 55. Then I saw another clip for another day. It says 95. And then now I'm looking at this article published by the New York Times. And they're saying that at least 205 people were killed. 205 were killed due to the flooding. Crazy. And I think this started on Monday. So since Monday, it was 90, it was 50 reported. And now we're at 205. And you're just, you're thinking most likely as they keep, as the cleanup process happens and whatnot, as, as the cleanup pro uh, process, you know, continues, um, you'd imagine, you're imagining that most likely they're going to find way more bodies, which is fucking heartbreaking. Like I said previously, like, you know, I've been to Spain a few times. I've got some friends who are from there and shit. And, um, you know, one thing you know about Spanish people, Mediterranean people in general, they're very close-knit. You'd imagine in a small city like Valencia, most likely, most likely, especially in that sort of town, that Pacific town in Valencia, you'd imagine most likely a lot of people know each other. A lot of people are familiar with each other. And most likely, probably everybody, maybe even in Spain, knows somebody that knows somebody who passed away. That's how tragic this has been. Like, everybody knows somebody that this has touched or affected. So, absolutely horrible. And there's now, you know, accusations of, like, you know, um, corruption, of misuse of finances and, you know, resources. There's all these blame games being flown around. But in general, like, people's lives have been completely decimated and destroyed by this flood. And it's really no fault of their own. Absolutely no fault of their own. So, let's read the article courtesy of, of New York Times. And then we'll go through some BBC News live updates as well, where they've been covering it really, really well because yeah it's kind of hard to kind of watch all this stuff play out in real time but, but let's have a kind of an overview of what they're saying here so the article courtesy of the new york times says as follows um bear with me a second as it loads there we go you loading yep there we go okay so um flash floods bear with me a second as it loads here there we go flash floods have killed at least 255 people across eastern spain According to Spanish authorities, after a deluge of rain in some spaces, several months were fell in less than a day. The flooding, which began with heavy rain on Monday, were some of the country's deadliest in a decade. Um, as rescuers dug through the mud to search for survivors, the death toll has expected to rise as some people are still missing and more rain was forecast for Friday. Yeah, um, someone that knows, I think dad is missing or something like that. I think I, I think I saw a message the other day. It's like, Jesus Christ. Um, the ferocity of the flooding submerged entire villages, turned the roads into powerful rivers of mud and drowned, so and downed poor in many areas. Videos shared online by residents and emergency services showed cars piling up as they were swept away by rushing water. Helicopter crews lifted some people trapped in neck high waters to safety and traveled to boat to reach others who were strained, stranded. As you can see here, there's a, vid, there's a clip there of an old lady getting hoisted up. Um, where are the floods? The floods are were more worst in the eastern and southern Spain, including the areas that often see um, autumn rain. Still, residents said that they were shocked by the amount of rainfall. The vast majority of the deaths in Valencia, a coastal region that includes the city of the same name, the city of Valencia, a popular tourist destination, reported considerable damage with flooding on major roads and subway systems. The towns and villages outside Valencia were savage, ravaged by floodwaters, leaving sodden rubble behind. Um, some of the hardest hit villages remain cut off and main roads and bridges still broken and inundated. In one area, Chiva, practically the year's worth of rain fell over eight hours, according to Spain's meteorological agency. Yeah, that's the thing. Because of the flood, it's basically cut off access to loads of neighboring towns and cities who could help. They can't get in. So people are literally walking on foot to transport aid and shit, which is quite quite amazing. I think because they, they had a public holiday the other day or something. So everyone was off from work anyway. So people are literally taking aid in their, in their hand and walking, you know, miles and miles and miles to go and um, drop them off at places where people can kind of pick them up and shit. Um, let's continue. Flooding also swept on southern um, region of Andalusia, which includes the city of Seville and Malaga. Um, on Friday, the southern western portion of the country was on high alert with the continued rain and the rain rising um, and risk of flooding. 
Did the climate change play a role? Meteorologists said that the rainfall was likely a result of the sudden cold drop known in Spanish as the Gota Fria. Um, that happens when cold air moves over the warm waters of the Mediterranean Sea, allowing for the hotter, moister air and the surface of the, to rise quickly and to produce a robust rain clouds. A storm system pushed the moisture-rich clouds onto Spain. Um, estimating the influence of the climate change on a single flood um, event requires further analysis, but scientists have said that the global warming is making storms in many regions more intense, warmer air and floods and areas with more air and water. Mediterranean is also getting hotter and hitting the heights of the recorded temperatures. Like, look at this. Look at how the cars are piled up. This is not something that you'd see in an art exhibition that freeze. This legitimately looks like something you'd see at the White Cube, at the Tate Modern. The way the cars are piled up. This looks like an ice insulation. Like, oh my god, absolutely horrifying. So let's continue on with some other latest updates here, courtesy of the BBC. Rescue op operators are deploying now soldiers to the south. Um, this is good news there, an update. You see loads of pictures here of people from Valencia trying to clean up the streets. I don't know if they're holding... Is that, are those mops? Or are they trying to pour all the mud into the drains? I'm not sure what's going on there. But Jesus Christ, look at the amount of mud. And allegedly now there's loads of like diseases also in the mud because I'm assuming it's mi getting mixed in with the sewage system and all this malarkey. So there's a there's a rows of people, I think, going out to help with gloves and rubber masks and all that malarkey. Thousands head to Valencia support. In addition to 10,000 reinforcements joining the 1,700 troops deployed earlier this week, thousands of volunteers have arrived in Valencia to support. Young people have been coordinating and organizing cleanups on social media with people pictured here queuing with mops and buckets to help clear the mud and the debris. Wow. Jesus Christos. What's Spain, what the PM saying for Spain? Pedro Sanchez is saying, in total, we're talking about the biggest deployment of emergency services and, <coughs> and the army deployed in peacetime of our country. He reports that 4,800 rescuers have already been made. Rescues have already been made in addition with helping more than 30,000 people. Unfortunately, the scope of the disaster means that this is not enough. We know that the aid is taking time to reach the certain locations, that there's still garages and homes that are blocked and people are still trapped. He bows he vows teams will work tirelessly until the aid workers reach everybody yeah i guess it's the best they can do in it unprecedented situation really and truly when you think about it um another article here says there's anger while the official three-day mourning period comes to an end today spain is still coming to terms with the full impact of the flash flood that killed at least 211 people now reported in valencia um Pai Porta resident um, Amora Estevi tells the BBC that no one is helping us. People feel abandoned. This morning, the Pedro Sanchez uh, described the flood as the worst natural disaster ever. Hundreds of Valencia people are coming to help us. Francisco Munoz um, Montoro, 24, has been walking for three hours every day to help restore his uncle's home in Pai Porta. All the main roads have been cut off for the village, which is also badly affected by the floods. He feels disappointed in the response from the local authorities and explains that his uncle's house has been badly damaged. The Spanish emergency services is really bad. They, we aren't getting any help. The emergency services haven't approached us to ask if we need anything. People from Valencia are doing a better job. Hundreds of people are coming. That's the thing I think that everybody's realised. I think even since the pandemic, really, I think rich people, even, probably even rich people have realised it. No one's ever going to help you. The government especially. You have to help yourself. This is why most likely the people of Valencia will probably sort this issue out themselves, coordinating things and cleaning things up. Like they will get it all sorted quicker than if they were to sit on their hands and rely on the government to kind of come in and help. That's the wild thing. I think we all realise it during COVID. Like the government ain't going to help us. They're there, to help, they're there to line their own pockets, help themselves. Even in England, look at fucking Boris and them, man. They were having parties. They were raving it up. They were raving it up and having parties while some of us weren't able to see some of our extended families, family members. And some of us have older family members who passed away during COVID who we couldn't go see or mourn or visit in the hospital or any kind of thing. And these guys were, were raving it up. They were flipping, you know, cashing in, flipping contracts for PPP and shit, um, you know, in their back pockets and stuff while we were out here hustling, struggling. So that's the really sad part about these situations. Like the government really ain't going to help actually no way jose um people feel abandoned um a little more from valencia resident alex baker who says that the cleanup operation has involved citizens coming in with brooms on foot 
She described, oh, this is the gym as well. She describes a couple of firefighters and local police overseeing efforts yesterday. She hasn't personally seen any military help, but as that some friends have seen Red Cross volunteers. Local citizens have set up interactive maps, websites to help coordinate help. People are asking for medicines, including antibiotics, insulin, as well as unnecessities, as well as nappies and bread. People feel abandoned. The general feeling is one of solidarity, but also a bit of mistrust. People don't feel like the local government is stepping up yet. Um, she also believes that the emergency messages which came through around 8 p.m. on Tuesday was too late, adding that towns were already flooded. Yeah, I heard this too. I read online from people that allegedly the flooding already started and it was getting was already crazy by Monday. And by the time the uh, official alert sounded, some people already died. You know what I mean? Well, some people were currently, you know, in fucking um, chin high water inside their own homes and shit. Spain Prime Minister has ordered 5,000 more troops, 5,000 police officers and civil guards and Valencia's region in, in addition to the 1,700 additional people working on the search. God damn it. Street cars full of stick, thick and sticky mud. Cleanup continues in Valencia. Crazy. Post-apocalyptic wouldn't even begin to describe it, a person says. The streets are full of cars, she explains, meaning the cleanup can't get fully underway. Oh yeah, because all the cars are blocking the cleanup, isn't it? We were climbing over motorway barriers. People were walking on motorways. That she describes a thick, sticky mud as a smashed-up caravan on the door of a shop. Piles of cars, like toy cars. Where's all this stuff going to go? That's a good point. Where are they going to put all that shit? Even once they clean it up, who's moving all those cars? Fucking hell. I guess I, maybe the maybe the the owners can drive them away, but I don't think so. They've probably been all water damaged, isn't it? They're probably all full of mud and shit. How are you going to get those cars to move or to start? Jesus. Woman was rescued after three days trapped inside. A woman has been rescued from a car for, for after the flash flash trapped her inside the vehicle for three days. Martin Perez confirmed the woman was found in Bene, Bene Tusser, um, a municipality 29 minutes south of Valencia. Perez adds that she was taken to hospital. God damn. Crazy, crazy situation. Watch the underwater workers uh, wade through flooded buildings. Look at look at that. Look how high up that is. That's a that's an underground car park. Look how high up the cars are. Jesus Christ, bro. I'd imagine too. There's probably a lot of looting going on too. I'd imagine, right? Because people's literal possessions are getting flooded away like safes. So probably people. There's probably in this moment of pain and suffering, people are also being robbed. I'd imagine that to be the case as well. That's a really sad part about this whole situation. Look at this. Look at look at that aerial view from the 18th of October. All green. You know what you'd expect a regular city to look like. And in 31st, look at it. It's all turned to brown. God damn it tragic 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 absolutely tragic um near the possession bridge crossing the tu the Churio river in valencia i met um amparo estevi the roads to her home in paya porta are closed she's preparing to walk there to help her neighbor whose flat was flooded am amparo amparo sorry that's her name amparo um was in paya porta when the flood struck my neighbors told me to run as fast as i can the waters were flowing really, really fast. I was at home for three days with no light. No water, no phones, nothing. I couldn't call my mum to tell her that I was okay. We didn't have food, no water, for drink or nothing. Amparo says that she doesn't know if it's safe to return to her home because of looters. Oh, exactly. See, I told you. At the moment, she's staying with her grandparents. No one is helping us. I'd never been in a war, but this is what it feels like. I don't have any words. Yeah, whenever there's pain and suffering going on, there's always people lo looking to take advantage, isn't it? Honestly, some 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 of the people that we live amongst, our fellow citizens, our fellow civilians are like horrible people, isn't it? We're all struggling and in pain, and here they are trying to loot and steal stuff. Fucking hell. Crazy, crazy situation. So, force and feelings, guys, everybody in Valencia who's out there um, struggling and trying to do the, the, good, the good work. As you can see, a courtesy of this video, you see this video of like mostly young people walking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles to go and deliver aid to these aid stops and to help people who are clearly, you know, needed and struggling and stuff. Let me let this load because there's no ways the cars can get close to the village or to the towns because of all the mud and the flooding and shit. So they're literally walking. Fucking crazy, man. But again, shows the community spirit, shows that everybody's looking out for each other, you know. And again, the stuff that the government, you know, governments are slow to move anyway, but it's the sort of stuff that governments couldn't do at this type of pace anyway. Do you know what I mean? 
So the people coming together and helping each other is probably the best way that they're probably going to solve the situation and get a uh, good outcome in the end, you would imagine. Um, and then continuing on, actually, we got these really horrifying videos that I was scrolling through Twitter, actually, to check. Look at this video. Look at these videos, man. Or people's cars, just like people are stand sitting on top of their cars. Look at that. Funny thing is, I did hear from somebody, maybe I need to Google it or find out what's going on, but I remember hearing or read an article where somebody said that lived there that the emergency services people told them to get into their cars and get as far away as possible. And I was thinking to myself, if it's a flash flood and the flooding is like, re you know, rainfall, sorry, whatever, right? Flash rainfall and it's flooding very, very quickly. Surely the worst place you'd want to be is your car. Because I'd imagine trying to open your door or maneuver through you know, water that high is comp very, very difficult. And essentially you're going to, you know, give, you're going to be, in, you're going to be encased in an automobile tomb or coffin of sorts. You're probably better off just like trying to escape on foot as opposed to getting into your car. I didn't really get that advice. That advice was pretty, especially when you consider everybody's going to be trying to do the same thing. So most likely the roads are going to be blocked or going to be like, you know, it's going to be traffic everywhere. You're not going to be able to go out to leave. Most of the routes out of town are going to be blocked. So you would have thought maybe going on foot would be better. Obviously, it's still, still very dangerous, but I would think staying at home in that location is going to be hard. It's not the, not the best idea, but I would imagine not getting, getting your car is also a terrible, terrible, terrible idea. <laughs> Continuing on, you got more videos here. 150 people killed the severe floods look 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 how high up the water is man and these streets are narrow as well you know how spanish streets are bro like jesus christ that is so much water look at that look at that look at how much is just streaming through an area that probably doesn't get that much water ever fucking hell absolutely tragic so yeah force of feelings go out to everybody out there in valencia spain hold your head up as best as possible you know be there for each other and hopefully hopefully things can turn around fingers crossed things can turn around fingers crossed things can turn around